We will now address, uh, probably watch the video of the address of Carmen Reynard, the Vice President and Chief Economist of the World Bank. Take a look. So it's a, it's a pleasure to be here virtually. And in my brief remarks, I would like to uh, address the very important issue of global capital flows. Um, amidst the COVID crisis, of course, a major source of concern is that capital flows to developing countries and emerging markets dry up very quickly. And in effect, we got uh, an incredible preview of that in April, early May, when capital flows uh, to the developing world collapsed. Since then, there's been stabilization. Private capital flows tend to be very pro-cyclical. My own work with Kaminsky and with Bay has shown that very recent work that I'm drawing on here with Vincent Reinhardt and Christoph Trebisch have highlighted that private capital flows tend to uh, surge when we have booming commodity prices, when growth in, in the recipient countries is strong, and therefore it re they tend to reinforce the boom, and unfortunately they also tend to reinforce the bust. Beyond the conventional financial cycle, beyond commodity prices, when we look at the historic patterns in capital flows. Capital flows, private capital flows, respond negatively to a much higher incidence of debt problems of default. So what we are looking at uh, is the reinforcement of a commodity cycle a downturn in commodity prices, a downturn in growth, and the prospect of a higher incidence of sovereign defaults. All those factors tend to suggest uh, a retrenchment, a major retrenchment in uh, private capital flows. Now, by contrast, what uh, the work that I have done with Sebastian Horn and Christoph Trebisch, what this work shows looking at a 200 year history in official flows is that official flows, meaning either bilateral official flows or multilateral official flows, this is now in the context of post World War II, are counter cyclical. In other words, they are stabilizing. Um, when private capital steps out, official capital steps in. And this is pretty much switching now gears to where we are and where we may be heading. Uh, this is pretty much what we've seen so far uh, in 2020. Uh, if you look by any metric, even as I, as I mentioned earlier, we had a, a, a significant reversal, a sudden stop in capital flows in the spring. They've stabilized somewhat, but have weakened again in August uh, and in the, into, into the fall and, and winter. And the big question, of course, is what the prospects are. I will deal with that lastly. But in that interim, as capital flows were stepping out, uh, what we've seen is a major surge uh, in official lending by the multilaterals. Uh, this is very much in line with historical prospects. So what does that mean going forward? I think the gist of it is that when we look ahead into the post-COVID, taking into account the factors, the drivers of capital flow that I alluded to, growth in the recipient countries, commodity prices, global commodity prices, uh, and the prospect of a higher incidence of default as already evidenced in the fact that this year we have seen a record number of sovereign downgrades 
by the major credit rating agencies. What this means is we're looking at a period ahead of very shaky private capital flows. And I think, you know, there's a certain sense of optimism uh, that the recovery post COVID will be fueled by a renewed return of private capital. Let me, in this brief message, leave a big question mark of how soon uh, we can expect this. Uh, if you look at most of the global growth projections, including global prospects uh, put out by the World Bank or the OECD or the IMF World Economic Outlook, prospects for recovery uh, are there, but it is a protracted recovery. It's not an immediate recovery. The good news is that in periods like this, uh, if the past is uh, any guide, uh, we are looking at continued resource flows from the multilaterals uh, to tide uh, uh, to tide the to in some magnitude the uh, or offset in some magnitude the drying up of private flows. But back to the bad news. Uh, is that um, the size of private flows uh, is on a scale that uh, is very difficult for official flows uh, to match. Uh, bottom line is, I think, looking ahead, even assuming aside a major delay in recovery, I think we will see a period of very skittish uh, private markets uh, with emerging markets that, con that continue to have access to finance, uh, being quite vulnerable to uh, sudden stops. And in that note, uh, let me leave you with a message, caution in managing flows is the buzzword.